All right, everybody. It is Tuesday night, a little after seven o'clock. And as we do each week for the last almost four years, it's conversations with Commodores. And we've had to shuffle the deck a little bit, but I'm so glad that we have got a Nashville-based sports reporter who covers Vanderbilt and so much more. Billy Derrick is with us tonight. Good evening, Billy, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Bernard. Uh, thanks for having me on. I've, I've enjoyed these uh, over the years, all the way from guys like Watson Brown, of course, who um, who I know pretty well and have gotten to know. Uh, it's been an honor to get to know him and and even recent guys. You know, I think you mentioned you had uh, Ethan Barr on and, and some of the some of the players that played under Franklin and even Coach Mason as well. So I think this is a really important tool uh, that that Vanderbilt fans can can use to to maybe you know recount some memories of of some some old players and even you know in your generation uh, guys like a Watson Brown a Whit Taylor and guys like that that um, you know can can help connect generations that uh, and that's something I've always been really interested in especially uh, in and around Vanderbilt football uh, you know and. I, we can get into the 82 team because I'm just so fascinated by, by that. And I know, um, you know, you played of course under coach, coach Brown, right? Yeah. Okay. When he was the head coach in the late eighties. Gotcha. So yeah, I, I, I've always been so fascinated by, um, you know, that 82 team, but also in the late eighties, as you mentioned at the end of the nineties uh, and then where we are now. So um, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to getting into some Vanderbilt football. Well, thank you. And yeah, we're, we're trying to tell the oral history of the program. We've had players who played in the 50s all the way up to the current team. And just people, uh, guys and, and women, just telling their stories and how they're connected uh, to our program. But you tonight have a unique uh, responsibility, if you will, is to help us as the alums on the outside looking in a little bit. Uh, from out, when I say outside, outside of Magugan. And trying to make a little bit of sense of the transfer portal, which just opened yesterday and I think runs 30 days during this period. And for those of you who don't know, there's two, I think there's two or maybe three type times of the year. There's a transfer portal. Billy, you tell me if I'm wrong. There's the one in the, the fall or what we'll call the winter right now, 30 days that you can declare. And it doesn't matter if your coach has left or not. You can get into the portal as long as you qualify. Mm -hmm. Then there's a spring 15-day window sometime later uh, next semester. And then, and this is where I'm a little fuzzy. If your head coach leaves, no matter what time of the year, don't you have a 30-day window? Are you familiar with this one? I think you have a 30-day window to declare once he or she has, has left. Yes, that, that is correct. And, and uh, you know, Vanderbilt is actually – utilize that window from MTSU. Uh, Co Coach Stock still, uh, of course, was was relieved of his duties, and they picked up uh, a guy by the name of Zaylen Wood, uh, who was uh, you know, a pretty good get for Vanderbilt, I think, and, and one of their better uh, defensive players. So, yeah, Vanderbilt uh, used that to their advantage. And, you know, that's happened other places. I think, I, think, I want to say it happened at Michigan State uh, earlier this season, actually. And, of course, mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't have been able to find your destination, of course, because the portal hadn't opened. Right. Uh, but you, right. you can, um, you can, of course, announce that you are you are anticipating entering, mm -hmm. right? And and so you're you're not in technically, but everybody knows you're going to be in, and you have all this pre portaling going on. So this is an all season long affair, all year long affair. <laughs> it just right? happens to be the 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 Super Bowl time right now. Yes, and Billy is as alums. It's way too easy for us to play chicken little today, yesterday, and tomorrow. The right. portal just opened over 1,200. I could be wrong now. The last time I saw it was over 1,200 athletes, student athletes, uh, have gotten into the portal, including more than 15 of our current Team 3 uh, members. So it's easy to say, look at all these guys. All three of our playing quarterbacks, our top three receivers, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. What is going on here? Plus, Coach Lee made changes at both coordinators and strength and conditioning, and then he's shuffling the deck with several of the other on-field, now maybe off-field coaches. So it's easy to say, oh, here we go again. But the more I read into this, the more that I listen to, to different people who actually know way more than me about this, I'm not nearly as pessimistic 
as most folks about this because there really is, and this is not my term, this goes to Everett uh, here in Birmingham. It's to me, the, the, the mindset that I'm looking at is potentially what we've got here is addition by subtraction. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to stop in just a second, but what I, the way I see this and you know, the roster, uh, I think better than, than I, maybe better than most. A lot of these guys are leaving, not, not everyone, but a lot of these guys are older guys. They may have been coach Mason recruits, not all of them. There are a few young guys who came in with coach Lee in the last couple of years, but a lot of these guys that may or may not be big contributors into the future because if I've learned anything with Coach Lee, he doesn't do things spur of the moment. He and Barton have got a plan. Hopefully, we're going to see it unfold in the upcoming weeks. But these, the last 24 hours, the next 48 hours, it's going to look like, oh, here we go. We're building all these facilities, and now we don't have any players to play. So right. that's kind of my soapbox. I'm going to step down and kind of let you start deciphering things for us a little bit. Yeah, no, I think you, I think you hit it, Bernard. Uh, you know, I, it happened a couple of years ago, uh, or I guess it's a few years ago now, you know, as, as coach Mason was leaving and, and, and Clark was coming in and bringing his staff in, uh, but that, you know, that was natural, right? That was okay. You're bringing in a new staff. You're uh, naturally, your players are going to depart. Uh, but now I, I understand why people may feel a little bit different about it, right? It, it's heading into year four, uh, right. It, in, in a tenure that, uh, Let's face it. This, this year, I think, put a damper uh, on it, and, and I think the staff would 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 admit that. I think that this staff is very honest. Uh, Coach Lee has been honest about everything that's gone on this season, uh, whether it was publicly or, or privately. Um, and, and so, I, I understand wh where the the frustration is coming from, right, Bernard? Uh, you and everybody that comes in here and in, 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 into these meetings and people you talk to. Obviously, you're frustrated. Everyone's frustrated, right? It hurts everybody. It hurts the players, coaches. It hurts the people that cover, <laughs> the, you know, the program like us and and talk about them. So, in terms of deciphering, I like how you how you talked about addition by subtraction, right? And I I went through the roster and I got this roster before the season. Of course, it hadn't hasn't changed. I went through and highlighted certain players that I said, okay. This is a guy that this this staff and this program can't afford to lose, right? Um, and I put a I put a star next to guys that, okay, they can lose them. It'll hurt if they lose the, this player, but I don't think it would kill them, right? I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's okay that this guy is falling. Uh, but there are certain guys where I can understand the frustration. So I'll kind of run through some of those. C.J. Taylor, uh, numerical order. C.J. Taylor was a guy I highlighted, uh, and he announced he's coming back. So. Huge check mark there. Big, Ricky big Wright. Get, get. Yes, huge get. Ricky Wright was a guy I highlighted, mm -hmm. uh, but I also starred because Ricky uh, dealt with a lot of injuries this year, and unfortunately, we didn't really see the 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 Ricky Wright that we expected to see uh, this year, and 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 wanted to see that most fans wanted to see. Um, nothing, you know, nothing against his game. I just think he dealt with a lot this year. I think he'll land on his feet. Uh, maybe wasn't necessarily a fit, but I still think that's a loss. I think he's a really good player. Um, so so that's a loss. Langston Patterson is a guy I highlighted. They got him back, which was massive, as as you know, Bernard and everybody uh, that saw him play this year. And and he, I would expect him to start. Uh, Darren Agu is a guy that I have highlighted. He hasn't announced yet. Uh, still unsure about him. We'll see. Uh, talented guy, though, and I think that's a guy they need to keep. Bryce Callen, uh, sophomore linebacker. Is a guy I highlighted. I, I would expect him. I think he actually already announced. I think he put it put a some sort of cryptic you know, tweet last, out there. In the last, it's hard to keep up with all this with what yeah. they're doing. And I don't know if this is a concern. I don't mean to interrupt you, Billy, but I don't know if it's no, a you're concerted good. effort from within the athletics department. You know the social media, but there were about eight of the players or so today that they put out social media posts. I guess through Instagram. I'm back. We're back. We got a mission. Yep. We're on a mission, that kind of yep. thing. And, and some of these guys you're, you're listing were part of that uh, publication. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, I, there were some, you, you can tell by the difference of the graphics, right? Okay. This, oh. this wasn't made by, <laughs> yeah. uh, you yeah. know, one of the football uh, graphic interns or whatever em, em, yeah. employees, uh, but some and, of them were, I think. And, and some were made by the the player's girlfriend <laughs> who was well-meaning. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, offense, was, but yeah, you could clearly see the professional work. 
versus yeah, the work. I'm sure you saw this, but there's a guy tracking and grading. Uh, his name is Trey Oh, it's Lawless. hysterical. I did oh, see that. Yeah. It is. It's great. It's great. Yeah. It's pretty good content. But Same guy but that no. does the uniforms. Yes. Awesome yeah. follow. If any, if any of you guys in this have a Twitter, follow Tress, uh, Tress Lawless. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But yeah, yeah he tra- He has a uniform tracker graphic and everything. It's pretty cool uh, to to see that throughout the year. But he's also grading these uh, these graphics. And, I, and I, he's a, I want to say he's a professional graphic designer. Uh, really, exactly. really interesting, yeah. interesting guy. But but no, you're right about that. And I noticed that, Bernard, where they, they even made videos for him. And I'm sure they've got more videos to follow of guys because this, this is a long period, right? Not only this week, but the next week, the next week, all the way through early January, where you'll have these announcements being made. So, uh, yeah, I, I did think that was interesting. Uh, but, you know, back to some of those guys and, and, and some of these guys I highlighted, like I said, are younger guys that I think project really well, right? They may not have made an impact this season and they may not be expected to make a huge impact next season, but down the road, I think they project well. Martel Height, right? He did, Obviously, he was thrown right, into that yeah. fire. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and but I, I think he projects well. I think they like his speed. I think they like his athleticism. Obviously, not the longest athlete, uh, but but they like uh, what what they saw. And and obviously, he's a freshman, Bernard. Right? You throw him into the fire, and and uh, you know you can't you can't ask a kid to to compete in the SEC as a freshman cornerback. And and of course, he did he did his best to compete. Uh, but you know, the, it, it's it's a it's a, it's a lower ceiling, right? When you, when you throw a freshman out there, especially at, at the cornerback position, as you know, um, and then offensively Cedric Alexander running back, which I, I, I think a lot of people really like and, and liked uh, what they saw from him. He ended up taking over that running back job really uh, down the stretch of that season. And uh, a lot of people liked him. So I highlighted him uh, BJ Diakite. Uh, they call him the star uh, right there, there on the edge at six, four long guy, which I think they like, and they want to keep, and then rolling on, I did highlight Bradley Ashmore, uh, Bernard, and, and he's a guy that had, that declared for the draft. I saw that. I so, did, yeah, yeah I, I think Ashmore is a guy they they love, program guy, right? Mm-hmm. Gave his all. Um, and, and you know, I, I got to talk to him during fall camp and just a really in, funny, entertaining guy, uh, you know, good dude to be around. So uh, wishing him well in, in the future, of course. I think he projects decently well, uh, you know, with kind of that more athletic, uh, you know, tackle. Uh, got type of guy, and then Gunnar Hansen is a guy I highlighted. He's coming back, and you mentioned the word mission. You know, he he uh, he responded. I think he responded to CJ Taylor's tweet and said, "You know, we are on a mission," or it was some sort of hashtag, or whatever. And so I think there's a clear, I don't want to say divide, but there's a clear pocket of of players that that ha- are fully bought in, right? They they have they have bought in, and they they're in it, right? They're on that mission uh, yeah. with with Clark Lee. And, you know, with us being outside of McGugan, and this is not a complaint. This is just Mm -hmm. stating fact. It's we don't need to be involved in Coach Lee's and Barton's, you know, their decision making and the strategies. But we love to speculate because we love the Mm -hmm. program. And what we don't know is, and I assume that Barton and maybe Earl, I don't know if he's involved. And Coach Lee sits down with every one of those players at the end of the year and, and basically lays out, Here's our future plans with or without. We're going to encourage you to stay. We're going to encourage you to uh, do what you want, but we don't necessarily have you. So we don't know those things from a standpoint of maybe there were some of these guys encouraged to move on. Right. As opposed to, and we'll get into NIL in just a minute. But one of the things that I'm so highly encouraged by is, and I'm going to call him our secret weapon, is Barton. Because I don't think there's anybody in the country that comes with his knowledge of recruiting and how the analytics works. Love him or loathe him. I'm just glad he's with us. Yeah, I know. I mean, couldn't agree more. Uh, He he's a guy that is a Nashville guy, right? Went to went to school with Clark and they're best friends. They've 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 publicly uh, talked about that, right? And 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 you know, they're they're three years in this, right? They haven't even really scratch the surface of 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 getting the majority of this roster flipped to guys that they brought in yeah. right and and you know you talked about coach mason earlier and and tons of respect for coach mason and i think he's going to take that uh, that mtsu job which <laughs> i just I, I just i can't help but laugh because you know he's a guy that's still in nashville and it's uh it's an interesting dynamic but nonetheless bernard i think he's a he's a great recruiter and he brought in talent 
but when when you have a, a new coach come in, right? There are there are fundamental changes, uh, you know, deep rooted uh, changes uh, that that have to be made anytime you have a coaching change, right? Uh, because most coaches have different ways of doing it. Clark had uh, happened to have a totally different way of doing it than than Coach Mason, and and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just Clark knew the changes that had to be made. And, you know, he's he's still, believe it or not, still, uh, you know, dealing with, with, with some remnants of those, right? I, I think, you sure. know, the heading, heading in, yeah, heading into year four, um, you know, this is a big year because you have your, your, your year three guys, a third year of that first class, guys like Langston Patterson and, and Darren Agu and uh, Issa Wataha, you know, big defensive lineman. There are certain guys that, Year three is usually that year, as, as you well know, Bernard, right, to where these these young guys can kind of explode. So I want to emphasize that, that they are still uh, fighting through some, some of the, I don't know if you'd call it mental baggage or what, but they're still kind of ripping that away. And, and again, people may call me crazy for saying that, but no. year one was really, year one was really year zero. Well, um, I was going to you know, say, because- it was... It was like drinking from a fire hose from from the first day those guys got on campus. And Billy, the more experience these guys get, the game slows down, the heart rates slow down, they do less thinking and do more reacting and acting like like the athletes that, that they are. And just case in point, put any new quarterback behind center in a Division I game for the very first time, no matter how highly recruited uh, he is, he's going to struggle until everything slows down for him. It's the rare athlete or the rare quarterback that steps in and and Mm -hmm. immediately excels, but it just, it takes a while for majority, I would say 98% of these guys to just let the game start come to them instead of them having to catch up to the game, if that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. And late in the season, I really saw some guys start to really find themselves, right? Langston Patterson in, in the midst of a tough yeah. season, right? You know, covering the team, Bernard, you know, especially down the stretch of that season, it was tough to 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 find new things to talk about. But at the end of the day, you know, you had to find that that diamond in the rough, that silver lining, and, and you had to find those performances and Langston Patterson's performance at Ole Miss. And you could really name out three or four Patterson performances down the stretch where he really stood out. You know, offensively, Cedric Alexander talked about him, right? Guy that projects yeah. really well. Unfortunately, Humphreys uh, stood out as well, but Humphreys uh, has entered the portal. And and I, I think that is the biggest loss, right? I, I think most people can agree with that. Um, you know, decided to to make a change in, on his path. And, and again, good luck to him. Uh, but they've also got a guy like a junior Cheryl another local kid that really showed some flashes uh, offensive lineman, Grayson Morgan, that I think projects well. So I like that you said that Bernard, right? It, it, it does take time, right? Anytime you're playing freshmen and sophomores in the sec, you're going to struggle, right? You saw that with, with Florida the last couple of years with Napier bringing in his guys and, you know, he wants to, he wants to play them right away because not only does he want to, but, but he feels like he has to, Right, and I think that was a decision that that this staff made, maybe halfway, maybe a little before halfway, the you know through this season, is like, okay, you know, we've got these guys, you know, we might as well play these younger guys. Uh, nothing against a lot of the veterans, but you have to make that decision sometimes as a staff, and um, so they they made that decision, and you know you go through the season and you do, you see flashes, you didn't see changes in the win column, but you saw flashes and you saw okay, these are some of the guys we can build around. And I think they've done a good job of, of retaining the guys. They absolutely have to, have to retain other than Humphreys, uh, other than maybe a guy like a Durkee Wright, uh, you maybe throw Savion Riley in there. But like I said, as, of the guys I have highlighted, there's not too much attrition. Right. And, and yeah. so I think that is kind of a, a, a silver lining. If, if, if you do, um, if you do look for those sort of things. You know, as a side note, talking about the Patterson brothers, I love seeing them play side by side. Yeah. At the, I think it was the Auburn game uh, when 19, the older one, got hurt. And mm-hmm. I just I hated that. For him. I hated that. But it was kind of cool to see them playing side by side. Um, you're, you're right. Vanderbilt, historically, and I, I'm sure as much as you've been around the program, 
our number ones typically can match up for the most part with most SEC programs. What are we lacking is we never have the depth. We never have. Right. I think Coach Mason, who coached into his seventh season, may have been the longest tenured, tenured coach in probably 40 plus years. So the coaches rarely stick around long enough for all of their guys to be on the roster for a full season or, or two. Franklin, what was he, three years? Uh, Watson Brown, yeah. my coach, was was five seasons. You know, the list goes goes on. So from a continuity standpoint, if Coach Lee can, if he's there long enough and gets the guys that he and Barton have targeted in, there, there should be a lot more stability. Now, we thought we'd get it this year, going from zero to two to five wins, and then our mm-hmm. minds, we're going bowling this year, and you kind of look at the schedule and you point them out, but the season obviously didn't play out the way that that anyone uh, had anticipated right. or hoped for. And so it's it's combining a bad season with the initial few days of the portal and all these kids leaving that just really creates more pessimism than optimism. But if, as we're talking about, if you see really what's going on, as opposed to your initial gut reaction, of course there's a method to what's going on with Coach Lee and and Barton. We just, you know, it's not like he's going to say, hey, alums, everybody come here real quick. I'm going to share with you. Here's our game plan. You know, we're going to see it unfold. So I think a little bit of patience is is in order. But then again, if you've been following the program for decades, patience is about worn thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you want to keep bleeding black and gold. Yeah. So and I'm just kind of sharing with you a little perspective from, from an alum standpoint. But where I want to kind of shift a little bit, Billy, is I want to bring in the NIL component because one of the things I read. Uh, either through VandySports.com uh, with with y'all's writing, Dwyer or you, I'm not sure who who maybe Chris mm-hmm. wrote it. That there has been a great infusion uh, of funds into the NIL to make us competitive in the marketplace because we all saw what Nebraska coach Mar- uh, uh, Matt Rule said the other day. What's a starting quarterback going for in Division One, Matt uh, Billy, who's a, a decent quarterback? Yeah, about one one point five, I think, is is what he said. Yeah, yeah, one so. point five to two million dollars <throat> for a top yeah. tier quarterback, and mm-hmm. that's you know for a for a Vanderbilt program, that's just yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who would have ever thought, right? I'm 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 young, right? But I'm sure for you, right? Your guys' generation. I've talked about this with you know with George on on, on the Plaster Show. Of course, we have weekdays, and they just. It's unbelievable that the fact that it has gotten here, but it is here. It's here, and you have to adapt, right? The the old phrase, you know, you either adapt or you die. And Vanderbilt, let's face it, Bernard, if they don't adapt, they're they're probably pretty close to dying. And I I say dying, but you know, metaphorically speaking, right? You're not going to succeed as a program, especially in the SEC, especially in today's day and age, especially with Texas and Oklahoma coming in. So yes, Vanderbilt has had an infusion of, of, of money uh, right come in in terms of uh, of the football side of things and in and, and their anchor impact uh, collective um, which is massive right it's massive and, oh, it's and if you want to because I've yeah. had uh, Juwan and, and Al, well Alan George has been on the show as, as has Juwan about what's going on and this was just a couple of months ago and things have greatly improved financially from that standpoint which is incredibly encouraging. Now, here comes a a wrinkle, and I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. It just made the news. You probably saw this, that I think the head of the NCAA is trying to revisit during what was during the Ed O'Banion lawsuit times to making the, allowing the universities to be directly involved. Oh, here comes Congress. They've got to get get involved and get clamps on this to make some headway. But for now, at least for the next few years, it's the wild, wild west, and it has it been. Is. It is. It has been. And, you know, I think Clark and, and staff and Barton, everybody involved, had had a plan uh, in, in mind, you know, when, when he got here, right? Year one, like I said, that was year zero, right? I mean, yeah. you know, you're, you're stripping. I think he realized that he had to strip mentally 
these kids down to the core, right? And and try to, you know, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off, you know, and not even just a Band-Aid, but, you know, a, a brace wrapped about 50 times over your leg or whatever, you know, after that, after um, everything that happened, especially late uh, in, in the Mason era, but you roll into the, to the Clark Lee era and now you're starting to see in a lot of the investment in the facilities and that one, the, the end zone uh, there's almost is I say almost done, but it'll be done before the season. And then, you know, next year the, the, the stadium will be complete. So still, you know, you're not quite done with, with the, the facility upgrades. Uh, and, and, but now I think this staff has, has looked at it and said, looked at the landscape and said, we've got to do this, right? Th- this is the shot. This is the opportunity, right? To, I say, save the program. Again, maybe that's harsh, but I, I, I think that that was sort of where they were at this season, Bernard. And, and I, I think a lot of fans probably felt this way was a little bit of a slap in the face, um, but a, a much needed wake up call uh, that two, three, four years from now, the staff and this fan base might look back and say, man, we needed that two and 10 season, right? Well, we, Billy, we needed I was going to say, I, 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 maybe others may think this is crazy thinking of what, what you said, but I kind of echo in that. Let's say we would have gone, we would have gotten six wins. Let's say we would have gone six and seven or seven and six this year with the players who are on the current roster. And then they come back. And my, my thought is, is that a false sense of security? Do we still have players who either don't give I hate to speak harshly of these kids because they are, they are, they're just kids, but I think but in that, this era in this, in this NIL era, you, you say that I think with, 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 with them making money, it's on, you know, I think that tune has changed a little bit. Yeah. They're still kids. Um, but I mean, the money the, they're making, well, the, it's the, almost, they're no longer amateurs. Uh, free, right. Yeah. Free agency. It's era. hard to make that switch though. I, I know, yeah. I, I know how you feel. But Billy, they're still younger than my children. So yeah, I have to <laughs> treat them this way mentally. And I want to be respectful because I've met many of these guys and they're nice right. guys and they they respond to to questions. And I've been up to Magugan with a few other football alums and spoke uh, at an alum event where we kind of shared our stories with Team 3. And then we broke off into different professions and answered questions with guys who were interested in different the different professions. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fantastic, and there needs to be more of that. But I'm not trying to be disrespectful to these guys, but, you know, some of them may not be Division One SEC caliber. Some of them may not be fully invested mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually that they need to be. So not not having a productive season this year may not be the worst thing in the world. And and, right. I, and I say this with all res- due respect to, to the program, to the coaches, and everybody's put in their hard work this past year. Certainly didn't want it to be that, but there's a silver lining, and I think it's going to unfold right now. Yeah, li- literally right now, within the next month, right? Mm-hmm. It, there's going to be a lot that, that'll happen, whether it's coaches. You know, we haven't talked about the coaches. Uh, there, there's so much with this portal. I'm mm-hmm. sure we'll get get to those coaching decisions, but – I do want to kind of piggyback what you said there, right? Let's go back a year. Let's go back after last season. Bernard Wright, Vanderbilt was able to get a couple of SEC wins. They get to five wins. And mm-hmm. and here comes Tennessee into town. And there's some there's some optimism, right? I, I mean, I I think Vanderbilt fans would be kidding themselves. They said there there wasn't a, a touch of opti- optimism. Yeah. You know, Hendon Hooker had, had gone down. Mm-hmm. And uh, Joe Milton was, was leading Tennessee in here. And Vanderbilt was not a match. Yeah. So, you know, la- you know, last season, speaking in, in, in year two, ended in a bit with a bad taste, but you, you ended that season five and seven, Bernard, right? You were able to get yeah. to five wins and almost accelerate that growth. Um, and, you know, Coach Saban and Coach Smart and all the great coaches talk about complacency all the time uh, with, with the way you, as a head coach uh, or even an assistant or even a player, look at your game or look at, the players you've got. Um, and, and I'm not saying they did that, but naturally, right. You accelerate that growth. You finish five and seven mentally there. There's a switch of like, okay, we, we've got this headed in the right direction, right? We're, th- this train is, is on the right path. 
and you pass the torch to a young quarterback in AJ Swan, who they put a ton of investment in, right? And and so obviously the season happened and we know what happened, but you lost a couple of leaders in Mike Wright and Ray Davis. Um, looking back, they were massive, massive parts of that team. Yeah. And and so that was that season. But I, I want I want fans to realize and everybody in here. And especially for people that go back and watch on YouTube to realize the the difference in tone and the difference in feeling uh, in the way we're talking right now, as opposed to at this point last season. At this point last season, I think some fans had gotten complacent, right? Some some fans were sitting here saying, "Okay, you get to five wins in year two, nothing should be changed, right?" And and you know you you got that young quarterback, you had that hope piece, right, Bernard? You had that hope in the player with Swan and you, you felt like you had weapons and they did have weapons all season long, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work out, right? It didn't work out this season. Uh, there were a, a lot of issues, obviously, uh, but in reality, the, the pieces, the puzzle pieces did not go together, right? You would see it at times, but there was, there was, there was no consistency, but right now we're talking about an infusion of NIL dollars. We're talking about, uh, addition by subtraction right you lose 14 guys on the surface right other sec fans college football fans might say what in the world is going on at vanderbilt you lost your your three quarterbacks you lost almost your entire offense right you you know you do have some pieces back but you lost a good chunk of your offense you lost uh, some key defensive players what in the world's going on right that that's on the surface but i i want to emphasize the fact that we weren't talking about this last year and I think looking back, that was a problem because that that's today's day and age, right? You have to be aggressive every single off season, no matter what happens in a season, right? And, and so I think that's what the staff learned. I think some fans learned that. I think the collective, <laughs> right, donors, I, I think I think it was a big lesson uh, for everybody. And, and so, as you know, Bernard, right now, like we saw the Earl Bennett tweet. Right? I think some people saw that and were like, what does he mean by it? You know, what, what's he talking about? And that's Earl Bennett, right? That's not, <laughs> you know, that's not you or me, right? That That's Earl Bennett, a guy that, that is in McGugan, played at Vanderbilt. And uh, heart, hold, Earl, frankly, is the heart of the program. Yeah, he I mean, holds such a special place in the hearts of so many fans and and yeah. uh, obviously really tight with Clark and Kane to Vanderbilt because Clark was was the head guy, you know, is the CEO. Yeah. So to to see him tweet that, I had I kind of the gears were turning, and then you mentioned uh, Chris Lee's note uh, that that got the attention, and all of a sudden there there is that 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 hope piece again. Nothing's happened on the field, and as you mentioned, the the Vanderbilt fan is conditioned almost, you know, especially the older generation of, well, we will you know we'll we'll believe it when we see it, right? Uh, it, but you have that piece, you know, at least you have that that foundation you have that that level playing field now yeah. right and and so i i think it it'll be interesting to see like as we talked about what happens in these next couple of weeks you, you're you're so right but step back and look at look at this perspective as well this is coming from a football alums perspective billy many of us who played our our four or five years may or may not have won 10 games collectively during our entire time we were on the the roster my years, we won nine games in the four years. All of us come from programs that historically have won you know, state championships or have been productive uh, on the field from a, a high school standpoint. So you come to Vanderbilt, you've got all of this optimism and, and energies and stuff. And then as you go through the program, for most of us, not all of us, particularly the guys who were here for Franklin, you know, they had some very good years. Uh, Bobby Johnson had some very good years. But a lot of us did not have that. So it's been hard. It's been a hard sell over the years. It's been a slow, excuse me, it's been a continual guarded optimism at best, a resounding pessimism at worst. But then we get into last November and we get those two SEC game wins in a row, Florida mm -hmm. and Kentucky. And those were great wins. And frankly, the uh, football alum base is is gener you know is galvanized again. We got five wins. 
Now, Tennessee did to us what we've done to them in the past and beat them. You know, we got beat, made us not bowl eligible. It was kind of a payback in the past. But then we come into this season with all of this renewed optimism. And as we talked about, the season clearly didn't go the way we wanted. So it is my desire. It's my it's it's still the, the way I see things are going to unfold over the next couple of weeks. We're going to see things. Now, here, here's something that, that again, not an original thought to me, but I could see, and I don't know what the NCAA rules are with this. You may be better equipped than I. We need an OC. Could you see Clark hiring an OC and bringing his quarterback and his running back with him or his receiver and quarterback with him as kind of a package? Because that's where we are. With yeah. this free, this basic free agency, I mean, could you? I mean, I I know that there's been a lot of talk, and I'm not particularly talking about Notre Dame's staff or anything like that, but certainly he's targeting some of those Notre Dame kids that he recruited mm -hmm. in yep. the past. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, and and uh, you know, I talked about that with uh, Joey Dwyer, a colleague, a couple of days ago. And uh, you know, we emphasize the fact that South Bend is an area that Clark Lee, similar to Derek Mason. Right, I'm sure some some variable players uh, may may look at uh, that and that relationship with Coach Mason over there in Murfreesboro, similar to South Bend for some guys that are already in the portal. I'm sure Clark Lee has contacted. I know Clark Lee has contacted uh, yeah. as, as targets. So you're you're 100 right. You know that 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 is a that's a that's almost a, a non negotiable right for for Clark Lee and that staff right now. Right, you you know he probably knew. And expected he was he was going to be making a trip up to South Bend this season, and you know they they have targeted those those few guys. You're you're exactly correct. I think most fans know what we're talking about, but I'll give you an example, uh, Bernard. Right at a quarterback, Indiana, a quarterback, Brendan Sorsby is a guy that has entered the portal, mm -hmm. and um, you know they 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 should be interested in right. I I don't I'm not saying I know anything. I look I I look at Brendan Sorsby and say that's mm -hmm. a guy I've seen his film that projects well with with talent around him uh, a good scheme well that that indiana staff was was just let go uh, offensive coordinator uh, by the name of nick sheridan mm -hmm. uh, obviously he's looking for a job so again i think that's an example i'm not saying that's going to happen uh, but yeah. we, we've seen that happen before at mississippi state jeff levy mm -hmm. uh, com comes over from oklahoma mm -hmm. he didn't bring well, he, at least I don't think he's bringing Dylan Gabriel with him. Or Oregon is expected to uh, to get Dylan Gabriel, but that has oh. happened uh, before. But I'm very intrigued, uh, but by the offensive coordinator hire, uh, yep. and, and again, Bernard, we, we don't we don't know. We have no idea. Maybe <laughs> maybe they've got that hammered down. That that's the tough part, I think, for fans right now. You know, because we're just kind of, of people... floating out there with no right, right. You know, you hear you hear rumors, you hear scoops, yeah. uh, whether whether they're true or not, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, with with Twitter, you know, you've got kids posting their offers and posting their visits, and and people you know come out coming out and saying this kid's going on a visit this weekend, and and I think those are no a lot of those are noteworthy, right? That there are a lot sure. of those, and, and particularly we, lose... we happen to see. Humphreys end up at Georgia to take McConkey's place. Right, you know, that, that, that hurts our soul. We, oh, you know, yeah. with I, Ray I was... Davis lead. I don't know if he ended up in the top two or three rushing and maybe touchdowns at at Kentucky for its second year in a row. You know that that hurts. But just side note, Billy Kenny uh, Earl's tweet yesterday says, "I've never been more excited for Vanderbilt football." That that's what he had to say, Kenny. Um, but Billy, it, it's. You know, if, if we had, if we were the Wizard of Oz behind the, and, and controlling how things uh, played out, we get a stable, experienced quarterback. We get a stable offensive coordinator who has like-minded, uh, you know, for the skill set of, of who's going to be handling the ball. They bring in some, some talented, you know, guys on both sides, but you can't just expect the complete overhaul of the roster and this be a nine or 10 win season next year, particularly the gauntlet that is our season every single year. Right. This is still going to be hard, right? The, the, nothing has changed in terms of making this easier, right? You, you're still at Vanderbilt. You're still in the SEC. Those inherent uh, challenges are, are still there. And, and quite frankly, Bernard will always be there. 
right? The facility will catch up here in a few years. That won't be an issue. And I think people are really excited about that. Financially, in terms of, of, of the NIL collective, doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. You got that checked off, right? So so I, I think this program is is slowly, but they, they are starting to check off those important boxes that three, four years ago was sort of the the deep rooted issues that, that people would always bring up. And, and, you know, since the forties and fifties, you know, to be quite honest, but I, I think what, what Barton and Clark are trying to do is, is, is remove those like they had to mentally with a lot of those players in year one and even into year two, um, you know, you, they're still removing some of those in, inherent challenges and working to, right. So I think that's important. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's hard for everybody, right? It, it, this is not, there's no program out there sitting there saying, okay, you know, we're, we're good. We're good with what we've got on our roster right now. I, even Georgia, right? I mean, Georgia plucked London Humphreys again. You know, who would have thought after a two and 10 Vanderbilt season, they would have a receiver plucked away by, you know, the best program in the country. Yeah. So I think that's another silver lining piece. Um, obviously it's, as you mentioned, you've got the, <laughs> You've got the kind of the spectrum is the the almost pessimistic person, no matter what, right? It's almost it it takes, you know, a nine and three season, a James Franklin type season to change change their minds. We've also got the people, I think, whether it's you, me, whoever, uh, that that do have that that hope and hold out hope, Um, you know. And 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 I think Clark Lee is 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 one of those guys. I, I think you know he in his career, right? They never made it to a bowl game. I want to say they won four or five games in his, I think he was there for three years as a player, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. I think he was on the cusp of, of Bobby Johnson's, the the first uh, wave. Yes. His, his so, yeah, so even with Clark, right, those, those um, you know, inherent, uh, I don't want to say culture, but but sort of that mindset of, you know, can this be done, right? Questioning yourself. And I think Clark deep down believes it can be done. And, uh, you know, he's got the people around him uh, to do that, right? You still need an offensive coordinator, right? The strength and conditioning coach is is the second most important coach on the staff, as as you well know. So those are important pieces, right? But I want to address that real real quick. Go ahead. The strength and conditioning coach of almost 50 former players uh, signed a petition that we've sent into McGugan. And again, I don't know if it's going to be um, <laughs> seen by coach in time, but Jeff Mad Dog Madden is a titan in the strength and conditioning world in college sports. He played at Vanderbilt in the 70s and has, you can go look up his resume, but we're hoping that it, whether it's strength and conditioning or some other capacity, Coach Mad Dog will, will get a, a, a fair look and maybe be in addition to the program. I, I don't know, but at least from, again, my perspective is only coming from the group of, of football alums that we have in our group, but he'd be a, a, an amazing uh, addition because of how he's cultivated. He was at Texas. He's been at all these major programs and created such, he's such a, a player's coach, if you will. He really is a a, a great role model uh, for these guys. But anyway, yeah, and I heard, yeah, I no, you're good. I, I told Luke White, I'd, I'd give him a shout out tonight. And we, we talked about uh, coach Mad. Uh, I think it was a, a couple of weeks ago and, he told me I didn't. I had no idea he had played on that 1982 team uh, mm-hmm. as as an offensive lineman, and you know immediately that brings up uh, some old memories, uh, of course, for for a lot of fans and and players yeah. on that team. So, and as you mentioned, the, the experience with Mac Brown. So, obviously, as young as I am, I, I I don't I don't have that connection, but a lot of former Commodores do, and I think that's important. And and Clark knows that. Um, you know, Coach, oh, coach he, Smother, yeah, Adam, coach, yeah, Coach Coach is is really tuned in. I mean, look, Javon Hay and several others who are on the staff are all players uh, at one point or an, another. The other thing that, that kind of caught my attention, Billy, as we've been talking, we, 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 we hear, well, Stanford has all this success. Northwestern, all these other academic-oriented schools, as Duke has this success. Well, it's hard to sustain those success for, look at Stanford's team this past year. Northwestern's had up and down. Obviously, Duke is on trending up, but none of them play in the SEC. That's the answer. None of them play in our conference. So I say that every time. That's my answer every time. 
you know, and, and, and you just saw the importance of the conference with Alabama getting, you know, getting into the playoff and, you know, whether Vanderbilt's at the bottom or in the middle or at the top, doesn't matter. They're in that conference and you've got to play. I mean, look at next year's schedule, LSU, Texas, uh, Alabama, right? So that's the difference, right? That is the difference. And look at Duke right now. It's hard, hard enough for them to sustain it with losing their head coach, Mike Elko, their quarterback. And I'm sure they, 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 they've lost some players in the portal, but, um, but no, you're right, Bernard. I mean, that, that, that's, that's it. The, the conference they're in is, is the challenge, but I want to throw this out there and, and I'm sure we'll be wrapping up here soon, but midway through the season, I, I, you know, we, we have Clark on the, the plaster, as I mentioned, um, at least during the season before a game, you know, on a game week, uh, every week. And it was great to be able to talk to him, uh, every week and get that perspective. But I asked him a question and the good thing about Clark that I love is that he he'll answer any question, right? I mean, you, you know, you can, you can throw basically whatever you want at him and he will give you um, an honest answer. And, and if he respects the question, he'll give you a, a pretty loaded answer. I got some three, four, five minute answers, which, which was always really interesting, but he, he said one thing and, and this was about halfway through the season. I asked him, you know, they were struggling. I think they're, two and five at this point, maybe even two and six t- towards the, you know, the back half at least. And I said, Clark, how do you manage uh, obviously the struggles, you know, against, you know, preparing this program for the future in the off season, right? I mean, do, do you look at some of those potential changes, whether it's staff or players right now, right? And, and, and but how do you not let that affect players, coaches and the performance? Mm-hmm. And he, you know, long story short, he told me, cause it was a long, good answer. I want to clip it. I wish I could, but he said, Bernard, and I thought it was really poignant. He said, if you don't look at those issues right now in the moment, you're doing yourself and your program a disservice. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and I, I could have those words mixed up, but he said something along those lines of no, Billy, that's a good question. You have to, you have to look at these issues right now as they're happening. If you put them on the back burner, you will get dusted <laughs> in today's day and age, right? Uh, maybe not so badly if this was 10, 15 years ago, but in today's day and age specifically, uh, Clark Clark knows that. And so I, I was really intrigued by that answer. Um, and I'm sure, again, maybe most coaches w- w- would have said that, uh, but I'm sure there are some coaches that might deflect it and, and not answer it at all. But I thought that was a really honest answer about where they were at at that point in the season, right? Accepting the fact that they are struggling. What they're doing offensively specifically isn't working, right? They, you know, they can't defend the run defensively. But Clark had talked about even the portal and and things like that. I don't want to go into much too much of it, but I just go back to that and say, okay, they had they had prepared for what's going to happen in this two or three week period long before just right now, yeah. right? And and you know, I I'm sure that was tough, right? They did their best to to kind of juggle. The fact that we still have four or five games left, but we also know that month of December, as you mentioned earlier, Bernard, is going to be the most important month of the trajectory of this program. And if you look back, right, two or three years from now, we're going to be looking back at, I, I honestly believe, this offseason as to whether um, this coaching staff was able to succeed at Vanderbilt. So, uh, no, I, I just thought that was really interesting, the way that uh, the, this staff handled it and you know, Clark also talked about at the end of the season when, when I talked to him and, you know, I, I think it was actually George that asked him and he said, uh, threw a good question at him. So what, what, what did you learn? Right. And what, what would you have changed? And Clark kind of laughed and said, well, how long do we have <laughs> George, you know? So just really honest. And I think, I think, I think people need to appreciate the ba- that about him and he knows he made mistakes. The staff made mistakes. They're not shying away from that. Right. And I think, I think that's important to be able to accept you know, what, what happened and take the blame for it, as opposed to, you know, deflecting, I, you don't see very much deflecting within this program. And, um, you know, this, this staff is, is, is on the right track. I know it's hard to see right now. Uh, but as you mentioned, Bernard, the, these next few weeks are going to tell not some of the story, but just about the entire story, uh, you know, a new chapter kind of reset things for this program uh, here in this next month of December. And Billy, that's what's got me excited. It really, it really does. And it, you guys out there may think that that's kind of crazy, but if you really 
spend a few minutes and, and listen and, and, and dig in a little bit about what's going on on campus on Jess Neely and just continue to believe that these guys know what they're doing even though they're having to take all these lumps in these first few years, mm -hmm. we don't have all their players in. We don't have all the facilities finished. And frankly, and I've said this many times, Billy, and we're almost done. If I'm a, a ninth or 10th or 11th grade athlete, regardless of sport, and I'm interested in coming to Vanderbilt, I am completely excited about what's going on from a build standpoint with the facilities. When that Gosh, when the Hulk gets finished, it'll mm. be second to none. It's going to be spectacular. Yeah. And that all you know, when McGugan gets leveled and then rebuilt, all that's going to, it's going to be fantastic. But they're setting, like you said, they're setting all these things in place now for success into the into the future. But Billy, I know we could talk and talk and talk and still not have all the answers. <laughs> and, our, and our conversation six months or a year from now could be completely different than this one. Or we might reflect back and say, see, we knew what we were talking about back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope we're able to say that, uh, Bernard, it was a blast and you know, hopefully we'll be able to catch up, uh, down the road. And of course, uh, with the off season happening, uh, there, <laughs> there's so much going on, right? I can't imagine uh, being mm -hmm. a coach or even a, a staffer. Could you imagine being a recruiting staffer? right now right now no. I, I don't think they're getting a getting a ton of sleep but no important yeah. time huge time tense I, that might be a word that to, to describe this this time but you know with in the in the christmas uh you know advent season even you know you're, you're looking you're looking down the road and excited about you know christmas day of course and i think vanderbilt fans have reason uh to be excited it'll be determined this this month and yeah. uh, as you said Bernard, uh, you should be excited. You know, I mean, if, if you're, you know, if you haven't read Chris Lee's note, I strongly encourage, uh, it, it does take a, a, a subscription. You, you can either, you know, do that one time, uh, purchase 10, you know, nine ninety nine a month, uh, snag that, or you can stay uh, subscribed, you know, all, all kinds of different scoops. So that'd be great. But it, yeah, that, that's kind of the note we've, I think what might've kicked us off and that we've been referencing. Um, but no, there's a lot of others, you know, uh, a lot of other uh with you know people you talk to i talk to that that help support this 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 uh this belief and kind of the, this thinking so uh no bernard it was a blast and uh i, I look forward to uh to catching back up don't, don't you tell chris i said this but that was his jerry Maguire note <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> hey real quick uh i was talking to luke earlier he said uh, he told me to ask you how's everything down in dothan Everything is very good in Circle City. Luke has been <laughs> a dear friend since 1985, and, and there's no one I enjoy sitting next to more at a Vanderbilt sporting event because that man knows more about all of Vanderbilt athletics and the and the personnel that make it up than any living person. No, there's no question. It's no crazy, question. and I, you know, I I just met him, and I've been able to. Uh, to build a, a little bit of a relationship with him here in the last few months, uh, you know, coming on with Chris, but I can't believe I had never, never knew who he was and I never met him. You know, I, I felt like I'd been missing out, you know, at, at the, is, until this point. Your, Billy, he's your secret weapon. But before we get out of here, <laughs> how can folks get in touch with you or follow what you do in the media other than that? When I know you're on the George Plaster show almost every day, uh, but how else can folks follow you or get in touch with you? Yeah, so I, you know, of course, I mentioned uh, our our message board there at VandySports dot com, uh, nine ninety nine per month, uh, ninety nine dollars a year, great deal. You know, all kinds of different analysis. You'll get links to our stories and podcasts and all kinds of different things um, on on that board. But you also, you know, a lot of those articles are most of the articles, if not all, are are free. So whether it's Joey, uh, myself, or Chris, uh, and and it's been awesome the, those last three or four months to to be a part of that team. So VandySports dot com. Is where you can find us. Go uh, subscribe to the to the YouTube channel as well. Uh, my Twitter, Billy Derek Ten. Um, Twitter probably on Twitter too much, but uh, it's it's a it's a little important for for what I do, and and that's where the Plaster Show is uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, you were also on YouTube, Facebook, so very uh, modern approach to to media, but it feels like Bernard. That's what everybody's doing now. Of course, I know a lot of your interviews are you know if not all are, are up on YouTube now, which I think is great. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's been, it's been a blast and, you know, doing, doing what I, what I love to do. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it, 
there there's uh there's some days i take it for granted but it's fun you know being able to go into mcgoogan and and you know go to a lot the home home football games joey and i even made a trip out to winston-salem for, for the wake forest game so it's mm-hmm. fun and uh yeah bandysports.com if you uh if you haven't uh checked it out i'm sure a lot of you have but if you haven't go check it out especially this time of year uh, very important to uh, to keep up. So, uh, but Nard, I, I I really thank you for the opportunity. And, and again, I, I love what you're doing. I think it's so important uh, to uh, to to maintain this, right? And and I'm not not sure how long you've been doing it, but I think people uh, would love to see these continue. Uh, whether it's you know guys like me that uh, that talk and cover cover Vanderbilt, but also former players, uh, former coaches, and uh, even a guy like a like a Luke Wyatt. So you know, look at, looking forward to, to seeing more of these, but, but yeah, vandysports.com is the site. And then uh, the, the, the George Plaster show, if you just search that on YouTube, we'll be able to, to see that. We'll talk a lot of Andy, of course, George being a graduate and, and still keeping up. So uh, no, I, I appreciate the time. Well, thank you, Billy. And, and stick around with me. Let me sign off uh, guys. We've got Commodores lined up now into March. It is just get into our site. You'll see the roster coming up. Um, every Tuesday, we're going to take a break or two during the Christmas week or so. But there's a lot of stuff that's that's being fed through here uh, every day. I know some of it, you guys probably get a little tired of it, but that's fine. Everybody gets tired of me every once in a while. So just take a break. Come back to it when you're ready. But uh, thanks for, for all who commented and, and showed out tonight and every night. Um, Billy, we've been doing this for four years. We've done over 160 of these conversations. And uh, they're not only housed in the university archives, but they're now on Spotify podcast and YouTube as, as well. So you guys keep coming back. Keep the faith. Anchor down.